Hello friends, how is everyone today? So today I wanted to uh, make a video about an oracle deck, the Lantern Oracle. It is published by um, Blue Angel and it comes in a typical nice hard uh, box by Blue Angel with the um, typical uh, Blue Angel uh, guidebook. And um, I saw this um, oracle, pictures of this oracle um, posted on um, different um, sites on Instagram and so forth. And I thought it looked kind of interesting. And then when I um, read up on it, um, oh, that's Luna. And I was going to mention that I have a six month old puppy in the room with me. And there may be interruptions. But I've been waiting to make this video for so long, and it seemed like there was always a reason why I couldn't. So anyway, um, where was I? Oh yeah, so the premise, I really like the premise of this deck. And let me just uh, talk a little bit about that from the guidebook. So it says here in the introduction, the Lantern Oracle illuminates the four directions of eternal feminine wisdom from her four phases of consciousness. So they have added in another group to the Maiden Mother Crone, and they call it Guardian, and it falls in between Mother and Crone. And I really like that because um, my women's group did the same thing as all of us were getting a little bit um, sort of past the mother um, stage. We didn't, many of us didn't feel like we were yet crones, but yet we felt like there was some other stage needed. We called it Queen. So we did Maiden Mother Queen Crown. Um, but I like this Guardian idea, um, Maiden Mother Guardian Crown. Um, and so they are calling this the Four Archetypes of Feminine Consciousness. And they talk a little bit about the ages and they assign each one of these stages to an element. So the maiden is um, when men, uh, I, this is my age range, when menses begins um, and they in the book call it water or fluidity. Then we move on into the mother phase, which they um, say is birth, fertility. And of course, many people who identify as female um, do not become biological mothers. Um, we all know that, and I just want to throw that in there. There's many other ways that we can be mothers other than actually birthing a child. Um, and then um, at some point, maybe 40s-ish, we move into the guardian, which is air and insight. And um, in my um, women's circle and in my um, spiritual practice, um, women stayed in that um, phase until 56. And it is kind of a tradition that at age 56 you move um, into the crone through a croning ceremony or whatever. These ages are not engraved in stone. And I think maybe sometimes we, we move back and forth among or between them. But anyway, I liked, oh, I'm sorry. And then um, after 56, how can we forget um, the crone? And they had the crone as fire and alchemy. And that would be after uh, menses ends at whatever age that happens to be. So I liked the idea of this deck. I liked the fact that we were going to have a range of ages because so many tarot and oracle decks um, don't have images of elders or even um, women in their 50s or 40s. It's all young, younger women. And oftentimes, sadly, it's younger, white, thin, conventionally, patriarchally pretty women. Um, and that bothers me. I don't like that. And this deck, the Lantern Oracle, um, they don't come right out and say it, but reading between the lines, I feel like one of the purposes behind this deck is to empower women. 
And I think if we see images that don't look like us, I don't think that's empowering. I think we look at these, um, well, I, I will get to this, but we look at these sort of unreal, um, patriarchally um, idealized um, images of, of uh, women or females, and um, we look at that and think, yeah, that's not me. So. I can't relate to that or, ooh, am I supposed to look like that? Am I supposed to be like that? So I don't find it empowering to women. And, and I do have to say in this deck, mostly we do see those kinds of images, the really conventionally pretty, attractive women. There are some exceptions. We do um, have an age range. Um, but let me dive right into the cards. So, um, these, we, we start with the younger women, so we start with the maidens. Um, this is called Strength of Vulnerability. Such a beautiful card, and she, we can see, absolutely, there's strength here, but there's also, look at her face, vulnerability. Weeping Wound is the next one. And this card talks about how we are not our wounds, and we um, don't want to let our wounds define us. Yes, they are part of us. Yes, they influence who we are, but we are not our wounds. Responding, not reacting. This is another maiden card. And I really love this because it's actually something that I'm working on this year, choosing how I react, realizing that it's, it's up to me how I react. Um, metamorphosis another lovely image um, here we see a strong empowered looking woman and now um, we are moving so that was uh, I'm sorry I didn't say so the first couple were maiden and then we moved into the um, mother age um, this is the beginning of the mother phase um, I'm not going to show all the cards my gripe with this deck um, beyond the fact of the conventionality of the way most of the women are portrayed um, is I'm really really disappointed in the guardians so the guardians are women who fall between the age of crone and mother so they're done with mothering but they're not yet um, elder enough to be a crone so this is the first image of the guardian phase. I, I don't know. To me, this woman looks like she's 15. It bothers me. And all the images um, of these guardians are, in fact, like that. Here's another one. Does this woman look like she's in her late 40s or early 50s? Intention. Here's another one. And then this one. So the Guardian phase was a great disappointment to me. I have high hopes for this deck. And I really, another Guardian. And I was really disappointed in how they portrayed the Guardians. Because I don't think that they look at all like women in that age range. And it's very disappointing. And I was, I was thinking about different decks and... I don't even know when it came to me, but what I had kind of a flash of insight one time about a deck that has um, images of women who I who I feel like uh, are accurately portraying this guardian phase of life for women, um, and it's the Gaian Tarot. So here we see, um, well, we could see a mother <laughs> and a guardian. Uh, here's another one. Now these women, or these images of women, to me look like they are in that range, that guardian age range between mother and crone. Um, they're not elderly, and they're beyond that age range of mother. These are just a few that I pulled out of the Guy and Tarot by... Joanna um, Powell Colbert. They're strong. They're 
hard at work. This is, um, I believe, Joanna in a lavender field. So we can see these women to me are quite attractive and vivacious and vibrant, but they don't look like they're 25. And is there anything wrong with not being 25? I mean, I'm in my late 60s and I feel like, wow, I feel like, you know, sort of this invisible woman. And it's, you know, it's kind of hurtful um, to feel that way or to be treated that way and to feel like you're not respected or acknowledged or, you know, you're sort of outgrown your purpose or whatever. Um, and then in this deck, interestingly, I pulled these two images and then I was like, oh, right. So Joanna calls the um, queens guardians. So here we see this is the guardian of air. One of uh, I just love this. It's one of my favorite cards in the deck. And then we see the guardian of water. So again, these are these are female presenting folks who I think actually um, portray that guardian age group, and I'm I'm so appreciative of that. Um, and I wish we had seen more of that in um, this deck, uh, the lantern. Um, am I ready to write this deck off? No. I I really do like it, and um, I don't really use the guidebook. It's kind of schmaltzy um, but I, I like I like a lot of the images um, there's several cards that show um, women in, in groups on a card this is called women supporting women together we can transcend our individual lim limitations so I like that as showing how we as women can work together and, and come together and support each other uh, in a circle or in a group or whatever Sharing, we see this is a lovely, to me, intergenerational picture. We have sort of maiden, mother, guardian, crone, um, ages portrayed there. Um, and then um, this one is called circles. And again, we see different um, ages, which I think is lovely. Um, there are four cards, one in each of the age groups that start with radical. So the maiden one is Radical Curiosity, um, and I think, um, and you can see there are several um, portrayals of um, folks in this deck that are sort of fae or elvish or something, um, which is nice. So yes, yeah, so Curiosity, when we're young and we're um, maidens, um, we're curious. Curiosity is sort of a key. I believe one of the keys to staying young at heart is keeping that curiosity with you um, throughout your lifespan. That as long as we remain curious about life, about learning, about um, other people, about um, folks who have experiences and backgrounds that are different from our own, um, you know, we will stay young at heart. This is from the mother one, Radical Honesty. So that's something, a lesson or a trait that um, occurs during that phase. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. It's called Radical Self-Acceptance. It's from that guardian phase. And I don't know if you can see um, in this image, but this woman has had a mastectomy. And when I first went through the deck and I came to this card, I was so pleased to see it because um, at least here in the U.S. and I, I think in other Western cultures, maybe around the world even, I don't know, the statistics for breast cancer in women is so high. Um, it was one in eight, but I think it's even higher than that now. And so to, for someone who's had a mastectomy to see themselves portrayed in a deck um, must make them feel seen and heard and recognized and validated, their experience anyway. So this is radical self-acceptance. And then for the crone, we have radical self-love. And I think this is a beautiful image because this woman does look older than 25. <laughs> um, so I think that's lovely. Um, here are some more crone images. This is um, Transitions. I'm hearing some chewing. I gotta look. 
Okay. Someone decided to chew on some sage. Yes, that's okay. Um, perspective. This is um, inner integration, and so it shows the same woman as she is um, maiden, mother, guardian, crone, right? And that might even address the whole idea of time being circular, not linear. Um, home, another lovely crone image. And then this one is inner life. Um, your inner life is a garden to be cultivated. So I give this deck maybe a B, <laughs> um, love the idea of it, wish it had been ex executed a little bit better. Um, again, as I said, if your goal is to be a deck that is empowering to women, but you have these images that are sort of like the sexy witch image um, and are not, are not actually reflective of what we really look like and especially like I said that guardian phase um, it's disappointing but um, there are some beautiful images and empowering cards in this deck and so I'm going to continue to work with it and see how it goes um, I would love to hear from you if you've used this deck what are what are your thoughts about it um, what's your reaction if you haven't used it to, to my thoughts about this? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are you okay with these kinds of images? Um, do, you, do you wish the images had been a little more um, realistic? Um, uh, and if you have used it, what's your experience with using it? How are you using it? So I'd love to hear from you about that. So again, this is the Lantern Oracle published by... Blue Angel, I did not mention, the author is Angelina Mirabito, Ph.D., and it's illustrated by Yuli Alejo. So, uh, beautiful artwork, beautiful deck, um, room for improvement, but, hey, I can't expect perfection, right? <laughs> um, hope you're doing well, stay safe, and um, enjoy using your Tarot and Oracle cards.